Some of the world's premier athletes were in action at the National Stadium in Kingston on Saturday. Sharika Jackson highlighted the meet with an impressive run over 400 meters, while there were solid efforts from Bohemian Anthony Xtron and the Barbadian Shade Williams. Fans also had a lot to say about the performance of 21-year-old Jamaican Brianna Williams. Here's Brian Pitter with the details. Sharika Jackson, the reigning world 200 meters champion, was the headline for Saturday's Velocity Fest, a World Athletics Continental Tour Challenger event held at the National Stadium in Kingston. The 28-year-old contesting the 400 meters for the third time this season. Janine Russell trying to chase down the stretch. Sharika Jackson holds the advantage. Shoots off the challenge with Stacey and Williams and steps away. Now we watch the clock. Sharika Jackson comes through in 50.92. And she didn't disappoint, running an impressive home stretch to shrug off the challenge of Stacey and Williams. Jackson stopping the clock at a meet record and season's best 50.92 seconds, her fastest time ever in March. It was a pretty good race for me. Um, I think two weeks ago I ran 52.05 and I think I said in an interview that um, one of my main goals this year is to run 50 point. And I just did in March, fastest ever in March, so I'm super, super excited. The women's 200 meters was another highly anticipated event, and it provided quite a few talking points. In the B final, MVP's world under 20 100 meter champion Tina Clayton went up against Olympic relay gold medalist Brianna Williams of Titans Track Club. It was expected to be a close contest, but it wasn't. Clayton comfortably won in 23.69 seconds ahead of fellow MVP athlete Sarbani Nanda of India who finished second in 23.99. Brianna Williams finished third in 24.03 seconds, the athletes running into a negative 1.4 meters per second win. Clayton says she was happy with the way she executed the race. Just came out here to execute as did, to run a perfect um, curve and to maintain into the street. In the A-Final, World Championship 400m bronze medalist Shade Williams of Barbados ran a season's best of 22.98 seconds to finish ahead of Jamaica's Natasha Morrison, 23.24, and Tovia Jenkins, 23.91. Well, for the last two 200s I've had, I've been trying to work on my start because my start is a little bit slow, somewhat of a quarter mile start, so I've been trying really hard to work on my start. I was a little bit better, but not as good as it should have been um, and then I just try to come home strong. History's second fastest man, Jamaica's Johan Blake, was also in action, clocking 21.66 into a negative 2.3 wind to take victory in the 200 meter B final, an effort he says was impacted by the weather. I came out here today to run good but fortunately the breeze was heavy and was a bit um, in and out at the start but I give God thanks. Um, I'm healthy, you know, just looking forward for the season. Not focusing on, not focusing on the 200. The men's 100 meter final proved to be an anti-climatic affair as the two main protagonists, Zarnell Hughes and Julian Fort, were disqualified for false starts. Canada's Brendan Rodney then stormed to victory in a personal best of 10.17 seconds, just ahead of Woolmouth boys Jelani Gordon, who ran a personal best of 10.22 and ex-St. Elizabeth Technical High School standout Sachin Dennis, who clocked the season's best of 10.23 to finish third. Yeah, Lance, Mariah, we don't have a lot of time, so I'm just going to cut to the chase. Yes. Um, fabulous meet at the weekend, by the way, Anthony Xtron, 11.02, uh, a season's best, second fastest time in the world this year. Mm -hmm. But I am a little concerned for Brianna Williams and what I saw from her at the weekend. And I tell you why, 24.04 seconds for an athlete of her caliber, even into a negative 1.4 meters per second wind, in my, in my estimation, is just not good enough. Yeah. Now, listen, to put it bluntly, Lance and Mariah, it's the worst 200 I've ever seen from Brianna Williams. And I've been watching her compete since she was 14 years old and i've never seen her look this ragged even her coming off the curve she just looks heavy 
almost as if she was going from side to side instead of going forward mm. and for me lost her form badly in the closing stages and if it, there's one thing I've become accustomed to see her doing is just holding her form well for longer periods and I am a little bit concerned of course she would have left at a Bolden as her coach at the end of last season. She's now working with the Titan Strat Club, Gregory Little, Michael Freita, yeah. part of that setup. Mm -hmm. But what I saw on the weekend at the National Stadium, I did not like. And yeah. what do you think contributed to that performance? Because I know you have your pulse on a lot of behind the scene action. You're speaking to the athletes, you're speaking to the coaches. Well, at this stage, I'm, I'm not 100% I'm not sure as to what would cause a performance like that. What I would say for now is that Brianna Williams is on the Ricardo watch. Mm -hmm. And the Ricardo watch is essentially to see where she goes from here. Yeah. Because athletes of that caliber, when you have a really good athlete, they can turn things around and look completely different two or three weeks down the road. So I will accept that. Mm -hmm. But Seeing her initially, I'm not happy with, with what I saw on Saturday. Yeah, I, I hear you, Ricardo. It's going to be a long season. World Championships is late August. This is only March when most athletes, well, internationally, will be coming out of their indoor, indoor season. And I agree that she didn't look very impressive, but this is March. You know, the, the full outdoor season starts early May with the Diamond League and so on. So let's hope she gets things together because, as you just pointed out, quality athletes can turn things around. And uh, she is in a group that knows what they are doing, the Titans group. And um, I, I would like to think that this is March and she has a long season ahead of her and she'll get things straight. Yeah. yeah. As I said, for me, she's on the watch. I'm looking closely to see yeah. what happens from this point on. Clearly, she is... A wonderful talent that can serve Jamaica well even if she does not make an individual team but as a relay runner and yeah I was not impressed with what I saw at the weekend as I said it's the mm -hmm. worst 200 I've ever seen her run and I'm looking at her closely all right yeah. well it's interactive time which means I'm in charge now <laughs> let's take a look at so what's the first item on the agenda are we going to talk about Haley Matthews yes and her brilliant performance let's see what our viewers had to say on Twitter. Okay, so firstly, this is how Haley reacted to her performance. An unforgettable experience. Do we have more reactions? Yeah. Well, well she would have to feel that way because the women's IPL first ever uh, uh, season of it yeah. in a full sense yes the world's best women's cricketers are on show and she gets play of the series mm -hmm. yeah. absolutely fantastic as mm -hmm. i said wonderful effort i would still love to see more consistency with the bat but yeah. she did average 30.11 and she got 16 wickets and what i'll also say mumbai indians used their not necessarily as a pinch hit up but i for want of a better term because they wanted her to be the one to really go after the bowling at the top of the order and maybe sometimes that meant that she got out early because she was more aggressive but yeah she had a really good tournament so congrats to Haley you've done the entire Caribbean proud as always all right well Kyle Butler the son of Craig Butler who manages reggae boy Leon Bailey posted this on Instagram moments after the reggae boys drew two all with Mexico at the Azteca on Sunday. Let's go, oh, let go the beast and he tagged Whisper. Mm. So of course, you know, questions Ricardo and Lance should Whisper have been on the national setup to face Mexico? Lance, you're up first. Well, I think he, he could have gotten a shot, but coach Hal Grimson explained why he didn't put him into this setup because he's um, still a teenager and he is about to embark on a Chelsea move and he feels there's a lot on his plate at the moment and he just didn't want to burden him with you know with um, an international assignment at this point um, it's just a Nations League event not like the Gold Cup or something like that why are which, you laughing which which you know is a is a whole series of matches so um, I, I, I understand the coach's position but personally I, I would have liked to see him in, in Mexico Agreed. Now let's hear why he was laughing. No, I was laughing because Lance said it was just a Nations League clash, but I'm not going to take up Lance on that. I would have taken him. 
I would have loved to have seen him come on in the last yes. 10 minutes or so when Jamaica was looking for a goal um, to win the game. But I can also appreciate the explanation given by the coach. All right. Well, team, we're out of time today. Monday, it's over, but we'll be back tomorrow. Same time, same oh. place. So tomorrow is when I defend myself, Mariah. No. So I'm letting the viewers know. Go your, to Instagram. Your goal scoring skills spoke for yeah, itself. Go to Instagram, look at the tire challenge, and tomorrow I will defend myself. Viewers, you know you love me. There's no defense for that. You saw what you saw. We're out of time. I have to go. 